So let's jump and see uh, those files that we just got from our friend Jeff. All right. So let's go over here and here we go. Here are the files, guys. Let's inspect it together. And we are going to open first this PDF right here. So let me open that up, see what our friend Jeff is referring to so we can get a better idea of what's going on. So we have a floor plan, as he was mentioning, and it looks like um, he is trying to automate uh, this block right here for the interior elevations. As you can see, this is a um, sequential number, 27, 28, 29, and so on. So, and this is the floor plan. Very nice and clean and organized floor plan, Jeff. Congrats on that. <laughs> um, so, let's now jump to the uh, file that he sent, right? So, we can uh, get a better idea. So, I'm going to open his file, the auto number call out bubble, right over here. And let's see what we get. So, we have two blocks. It says lazy call out block lazy call out block made from the polyline hmm so i get confused right here are these two blocks different or are the same so what i'm gonna do first is to inspect them i'm gonna go and go to my properties see uh the names for these blocks so it says lazy call out bubble um let's see let's expand this right here and all right so let's select this other block and lazy call out bubble so both blocks are the same right um so i believe we're gonna just use any of those um but the first thing that i'm gonna try is go back and explain um what our friend jeff is referring to um when he said that he tried the auto numbering idea from our i don't know if he said from our videos but what he's referring to is to this uh, video right here that we did, uh, I believe a year ago, under our lazy macros. Uh, our lazy macros is basically a way where we quickly create custom AutoCAD commands, right? We put together a series of commands to run it or uh, use it from one single click. And that will, of course, save us a lot of time, right? So in the specific video that um, Jeff is referring to is this over here, simplifying your AutoCAD work with auto numbering blocks. So that's the idea that Jeff mentioned. And in order to speed up things here, right, because it's not about doing or redoing the whole video again, you can watch that video later at your own pace. But what I'm going to do is from that video, we created a code, a macro code. And I'm going to go to my Patreon post uh, because, you know, we post all of our macro codes, codes there. And I'm going to simply find it, right? So this is our Patreon page for people who don't know. It's a way to share all of my all of the work that I do, my files, my macro codes, my blogs, um, and, you know, and so I'm going to go here and simply type numbering to find that video. Here it is. And over here, I have the macro code that we created. So again, to speed up things, I'm going to simply go ahead and copy this code, right? So we don't have to recreate this. Um, this tool or this command. So I'm going to copy that out and I'm going to go right over here. And what I'm going to do is simply um, open my command macros palette, right? So I'm going to say command macros, right? That's the brand new command macros that AutoCAD introduced, I believe, in AutoCAD 2023, right? And it's very useful. Again, we'll be uh, we, uh, we've been creating so many macro commands and somehow AutoCAD realized that this is important and the AutoCAD gave us our own palette now to create our macros, which is great. Before we used to create these macros using our tool palette, as you are seeing, we have many commands that we created here on the, on the channel, but, um, I like to use the brand new, uh, macros command. 
So I have so many suggestions here from AutoCAD. I just renamed it to test because I like to uh, create my own macros command that are specific to my work, to my needs, right? And that's what you should do, what you should do too. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do here is um, go uh, and rename any of these commands, right? So I'm gonna right click on it and say command macro editor. Once I do that, I can, of course, type a new name. Uh, maybe here's up to you, but I'm going to call this lazy block numbering for the name of my command. An important thing is here, of course, you can add a description uh, and the macro part, right? That's where I'm going to go ahead and erase all of these and paste with the control V. Uh, so the code that I just copied from our Patreon post right now since jeff didn't give me the code or the macro string that he was using that doesn't work as he's saying right so i'm gonna have to kind of quickly recreate it right and the way i'm gonna do it is um uh, let's see over here um, i'm gonna jump to your questions in a moment so just put it on the chat i'm gonna read it in a moment so the way I'm gonna recreate it is um, go back to our Petron post because there are some uh, nice instructions here, right? So it says, replace block name here with your specific block name. And that's what we're gonna do, all right? So that's very simple to do. Uh, block name is right here. And uh, what was the name of the of Jeff Jeff's block? lazy call out bubble i believe so that's what we're gonna do lazy call out bubble here we go that's all we need to do here in this code and it's done so i'm gonna click okay all right to test things out now of course according to jeff this wasn't working so that's why we are here right to help to help him up and probably this video is also gonna help other folks that's why I picked this question, not only to help Jeff, but I'm sure because other folks have asked me already that they were having problems uh, setting up the auto numbering for their specific blocks. So that's why I'm doing this live with you. So let's test it anyway. We know maybe it's not gonna work. So let's do it, let's try it. So I'm gonna click on it and I'm gonna click like so. And as you can see, um, the auto numbering option is now working. All of those are number one. And we even have a yellow exclamation symbol. That means something not right is happening, right? So we can do is press F2 on our keyboard just to inspect things, right? That's one of the first things that I do when troubleshooting uh, all of these uh, macro code strings. So, and I can see here uh, something interesting. So I can see that uh, it says command 18, unknown command. So it looks like, and then we got 19. So from 18 to 19, it looks like uh, Oroka is trying to auto number this, but somehow it's getting confused, right? It's getting confused and it's not um, inputting the number maybe at the correct time. Who knows? So that's what we're here to try to figure that out. So let's cancel that with escape on our keyboard. Here, what I can think of is when I created this block, right? When I created the auto numbering block, I was only using one attribute in my block. Um, I use, I remember the column, column bubble right uh, for an architectural plan you know we have column bubbles one two three four to you know number the uh, column grids of each column and so on but here i see that our friend jeff is using two attributes you can see attribute one i can change it to maybe five attribute two i can change it to two or whatever okay so that's why i guess the confusion is coming to uh, to this block. How would AutoCAD know which um, attribute it needs to auto number, right? 
Would you know <laughs> if you have to? No, right? So then if that's the case, um, what I'm going to do is, guys, right here, I'm going to try something. I'm going to open this block. Um, I'm going to go to the block editor, right? And check some of the uh, properties of these attributes. So the way I'm going to check them is uh, selecting them and going to my properties right here. Over here, uh, if I scrolled all the way down, I can see under the mis, uh, I believe this is miscellaneous uh, properties, that there are certain, uh, how would I call this, certain parameters or certain uh, list of options for the attributes. Uh, so there is upside down, backward, invisible, constant, and so on. And now, uh, we can see that, of course, the properties that or the options that says no, that's okay. I will try to focus only on the options that say yes, right? And there are only two options. The preset says yes, and the lock position say yes. Now, if I go and inspect the other attribute, right? So I'm going to go here and select the other attribute. I can see also that the same um, parameters or options are being selected. Everything says no, the preset says yes, and the lock position yes. Now, from my experience, um, and because we have been creating many different blocks, we have the lazy block playlist also, or show where we create uh, many dynamic blocks live. And we did a video about uh, attributes best practices, right? And that video has hundreds of views also, so, or thousands of views, sorry. Um, is the lock position preset or option, um, does, we need that because otherwise we will able to move our, our block, right? So if I go to the test block option and select the block, if I have the, again, the lock position to no, I'm going to be able, or the person who's going to use this block is going to be able to select this attribute and move it outside of this block. And we don't want that. So then that preset is fine. We want that. But what about the other one? The other one that says yes. The, um, uh, what was it called? The preset option right here that is also is the only one that says yes also. Again, we discarded the lock position because um, we need that to be yes. But what about the preset? So for that, to clarify whether we need that or not, I'm gonna go and get some help here under the Autodesk uh, website right here, right? So we have the attribute definition dialog box. And again, all of these different modes. Uh, we did an entire video about this, but here is not about explaining again everything about attributes, but trying to figure it out our why our automatic block numbering is not working for our friend Jeff and probably for other folks right there, right? That's why we are here. So if we scroll down in the uh, the mode, that's how AutoCAD calls them, mode, the attribute mode that we need to read about is the uh, preset. It's right here. So what preset says is that it sets the attribute to its default value without displaying a prompt when you insert the block. Here we go. That's what we need, guys, because we have two attributes and we need to somehow enable or disable uh, asking for a prompt, right? Or displaying a prompt for one of the attributes. So that way AutoCAD knows that which is the right attribute that we want to auto number, right? So let's keep reading here because this is very important. So the preset option applies only when prompts for attribute values are set to be displayed at the command prompt. And they gave us a uh, ATT dia is set to zero. So again, this second part is also very important because um, they are set, saying that we need to somehow set the ATT dia. This is a system variable that works or 
um, customize the way attributes behave, right? And I take a look at this value over here because if we inspect our code, I believe we already have that out. So let me go and um, go to the command macros and go to command macro editor. Um, and we're gonna see here that we are using the ATTDA to zero. So we are covered in that situation already. We don't have to add or uh, modify anything here. All right, so we're good in that second sentence part, but not on the first one. On the first one, we need again, to change the preset option for one of our attributes, um, right? So what we're gonna do here is, and the way we're gonna change it, I'm gonna select the top attribute, in this case, number one, because this is the one that Jeff wants to auto number based on the PDF plan that he sent. So and what I'm gonna do is go to my properties and change the preset to no only for this specific attribute. And this will tell AutoCAD that, hey, this is the attribute that I want to auto number. So let's test things out and hopefully this is gonna help the issue, right? So I'm gonna close the block editor right here and say, save the changes. And now let's test our um, block and see whether we have another error or not. Let's cross fingers. <laughs> Because again, we're doing this live and you know, you don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> so lazy block numbering, I'm going to click here once, twice, and here we go, guys. So now AutoCAD is, AutoCAD knows which attribute needs to auto number, which is great. Now, still we have an issue because it's not auto numbering um, from a starting number that Jeff my one, but that's very easy to fix. If we go back to the uh, post, right? Uh, oops, where is the post? Maybe right here. Here we go. If we go right here and, and we read the instructions, it says that you can use the user one system variable to start or set a starting number. And that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna use the user one. And of course, we want to start from one, right? Because that's the idea. So once we set that up and try Jeff block, we can see that this is working beautifully, guys. And hopefully this is going to help Jeff, but also other folks out there. Again, to summarize, if you're using multiple attributes, you need to let AutoCAD know which is the attribute that you need to auto number. Join our email list or newsletter from the video description and you'll be able to ask your question and maybe be featured on this lazy question show.